Give us a sense of what's going on across Asia Pacific and whether the government support in terms of fiscal measures and monetary policy measures have helped at all. Great. Thank you so much for, for having me. Indeed, um, we, we have put out this report yesterday, which unfortunately does not show a very happy picture for the region. But it's, it's, of course, it's not surprising. Um, but for the first time, at least, we're, we're able to put some numbers to it. And as you mentioned in the introduction, in fact, we, we've been able to measure that uh, as a result of the crisis, the region as a whole has lost 81 million jobs um, in 2020. Now, the, the big question is what will happen in, in 2021. Now, the reason, the main impact of, of the crisis has been on working hours, and this is something that really sets this crisis apart from, from previous ones. Uh, with the various lockdown measures, we've seen some of the sectors like tourism, manufacturing, accommodation, having workers, uh, uh, having, to, having to resort to, to a severe reduction in working hours. Across the region, we estimate uh, the working hours to have been reduced by 15% in the second quarter over the last quarter of 2020. And as I said before, this, this is really what sets this, 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 uh, this crisis apart. Because with working hour losses, of course, comes very severe labor income losses. Mm -hmm. So you had asked if um, governments, uh, how governments are responding and whether our governments are doing enough. Well, here I, I'd have to say that, yes, governments are, are certainly doing quite a lot. And uh, they pushed out stimulus packages uh, that, that reach uh, in, in the $11 trillion, uh, right. which is a, a significant effort. But the, the problem here is that it, it's an uneven effort. And 88% of that $11 trillion is, is going through the advanced economies where they, where they do have the, the, the money to, to mm. do this. But so the question is then, what happens to the developing countries, which... You know, we're already being left behind. So uh, tell us a little bit about the vulnerabilities more specific to Asia, because we know that more than half of the world's informal workers are actually in Asia, right? And we continue to see these inequalities, whether it's among between genders or, or races or countries or uh, young people against more older adults. We continue to see this exacerbated. Exactly. It's it's this issue of informality that really makes the, the region so vulnerable. Um, when you have so many in informal economy, they're, they're the first to, to lose income and the first to lose, lose work, but also the first to bounce back, but on, under very severe, severely depressed uh, labor incomes. So this is where we, we estimate that, why we estimate working poverty to increase between 22 and 25 million um, this year. Now, other vulnerabilities are, are women and young people. Now, this is not something that, that is uh, unique to this crisis. It's, it's, it's something that we've seen in many crises before. But women are the first to lose their job. And it, it's, it's so unfortunate. But again, we, this is, we are seeing it in this crisis across all of the countries for which we have data. Women are the first to, to lose work. And as they lose work, they don't become unemployed like, like men do, meaning they still maintain their attachments to the labor market. Rather, they move into inactivity, which, which is a problem because it, it's more difficult to reactivate the persons who become inactive than persons who become unemployed. So um, women move into, well, they, 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 they move back to the household. And uh, what happens is the longer they stay there, the, the longer they, they lose motivation, the, the more they lose motivation. And the, the same situation happens for, for young persons, we, where we see um, them losing their, the young people losing their jobs at a, at a scale of 3 to 18 uh, percent more than, more than adults, which means that they, they enter their labor market uh, through periods of unemployment, through periods of extended inactivity, which means they're, they're losing their, their human capital and can face uh, long-term scarring. Sarah, we 
are looking ahead to see if there's sort of transformative permanent changes to labor force structure to workplace uh, policies on the other side of this pandemic given just how fractured this year has been for many workplaces I'm wondering if there's any positive takeaways that could come out of this Look, there, there have been some positive takeaways. Uh, I mean, I think first, first of all, the the attention that, that governments have been placing on the need to sustain sustain workers, enterprises, and incomes. So they've been um, spending on, on on average across the region the the, the amount of stimulus is twelve percent of of GDP. As I said earlier, this is, of course, it's higher for the advanced economies than the low-income economies. But even low-income economies are recognizing the need to invest in uh, these, these worker protection ac actions to, to protect workers. Now, the question is, will they be able to sustain this? Um, another positive outcome of this uh, crisis has been the attention placed on social protection. Now, going into the crisis, the region was uh, uh, grossly underinvesting in social protection. Mm. There's some statistics that say, on, on average, uh, beyond health, uh, countries are putting in less than 2% of GDP, which is a, a, a very low number compared to the, the global estimate of 11%. So now countries, I think, recognize they need to invest for the long term in social protection. They need to invest in the long term in labor, active labor market policies to make sure that uh, workers are, are in enterprises are resilient and able to bounce back much more quickly from, from um, future crises, because we do know there, there will be future crises. So let's, let's hope that we can sustain the momentum. Mm. Let's hope that uh, countries can um, delve into some of the long-term deficiencies, such as informal economy, 